I'm here with Jeff Olson, who happens to be um, just absolutely one of my favorite people. <laughs> you are such not only a wealth of knowledge with your message that you have for people, but your um, heart and integrity is just absolutely just incredible. And you've moved me so much with your message and your story. And um, I know today we don't have time to get into your near-death experience, the whole story. That'll be another time. But I just, can you for me, um, just cap briefly to people that might not have the opportunity to mm -hmm. hear your story yet. You had a near-death experience, right? Yes, I did. And how many years ago was that? Gosh, it's been 16 years ago Has it now. Been 16, 16 years? years. Oh my goodness. Yep. Let me ask you this. Um, the near death experience, from my experience of having one and then you know, also learning about others, is that something changes mm -hmm. for people and it's, it's beautiful because it's not always the same. I want to know what happened to you through this near death experience from 16 years ago. Um, tell me about what it's done to your life. Awesome. No, and thank you, by the way. You're mm -hmm. so kind. And my life shifted drastically at the near-death experience in two ways. Um, I mean, briefly, I was in a terrible car accident, right. crushed both my legs. I lost the left leg above the knee. My back was broken. My rib cage was crushed. Jeez. You know, my, my, my lungs were collapsing. My right arm was nearly torn off, and then the seatbelt came through me. Um, but the most devastating was uh, my, my wife and youngest son that were in the car were killed instantly oh, at the scene gosh. of the accident. Now, I left my body and um, actually was told I couldn't be there. I was kicked. I, I, was, I was abruptly kicked out and sent <laughs> back. But it was interesting because my wife, who I knew was deceased at the scene, was the one in that realm telling me, you've got to go back, you've got to go back. And I knew that because my oldest son, who was seven years old at the time, mm -hmm. was in the back seat. And I knew at the scene that he was okay because I heard him crying. So I knew I got to go back. And when I came back, I found myself wandering around a hospital. Okay. And in encountering people at the hospital, um, I knew them. I mean, they were strangers in this realm. I right. had never met them before. But while out of the body, I, I knew everything about them. I mean, I knew their love, their hate, their joys, their motivations, every choice they'd ever made and why. And I had this overwhelming sense of love. I mean, I loved them. I wanted to embrace them. It didn't matter if it was the heroin addict or the saintly grandma over here. I wanted to embrace them, and I felt this connection, this oneness with them. And that was really the big shift, and I'm paraphrasing, but mm -hmm. that was the big shift as I realized, gosh, we really are connected. And I also realized I've spent so much of my life in judgment mm -hmm. and comparison of Absolutely. they're good, they're bad, this is better, that's best. Right. And in seeing things in different eyes, and I, I call it the way God sees it, mm -hmm. um, I realized that we really are connected and that we really are on our perfect path. And Absolutely. so letting go Letting go of that judgment mm -hmm. and letting go of that comparison and embracing people and honoring where they are mm -hmm. and their journey and what they're learning without judging it completely changed a lot. That's incredible. That's absolutely incredible. Um, because, you know, uh, I think we share something very similar in our near-death experiences. Going through it, what we did, it's almost like it gave us strength mm -hmm. and reiterated what we knew before on a whole completely new awareness level. Yeah. And what I'm hearing from you is, I mean, tell us a little bit about what you've been doing. Your journey is incredible. Oh, now sure. that you have this message, but the things that you've been doing with it, that's what's important to me, is what are you doing now? And I think you're one of the mo best examples of how we can take these experiences and what you learned and how you saw the people that day um, in the hospital and then project that with your message. Sure. No, and it was a, it was a beautiful experience to, to, you know, to witness in, in a very personal way Absolutely. that, that love and that connection. Absolutely. I mean, eventually I did find my own body. Mm -hmm. I mean, there I was looking at what was me, but it wasn't. I, exactly. I was right here. That was just the vehicle I'd been in. Right. And entering back into the body was a very interesting thing. Um, I did spend six months in the hospital. There was 18 surgeries, reconstructive, trying to put me all back together again. But eventually I did heal. Mm -hmm. I went home. They fit me with a prosthetic limb. I mm -hmm. learned to walk. And this took, I mean, this took, you know, years. Mm -hmm. I mean, this was, this was after the fact. But 
during that time, and particularly, you know, in the hospital where I seem to have one foot in this realm and one foot in that realm, right. I learned a lot. Um, now, I was ventilated, so I couldn't speak. My legs were immobile. My right arm was immobile, and they'd actually ended up tying down my left arm because I kept trying to grab oh at all the, all the equipment. But I learned the meaning of be still, you know, be still. And I learned how to go within myself. Mm -hmm. and, and I found that within me were, were so many answers. I would have okay. communications with my deceased, uh, my deceased loved ones, which taught me that they're never that far away. They're never that far gone. Now, coming out of that was, was very interesting because having experienced all that love and all that joy and all that connection and then eventually getting better and realizing, mm -hmm. well, I, I've got to put my pants on and go to work. I mean, exactly. I've got to make a living. I've got to raise my surviving son. And, and it was really tough. It was like I was homesick. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like I was homesick and empty and had this big hole in me knowing all that was there and here I was. And I kind of wanted to just go back home. Right. And yet I knew I had these responsibilities here and I didn't talk about the near-death experience for for probably 10 years oh my goodness. you know I, I mean I had told my very close right. you know I immediate family members some of it um, but I just held it very close mm -hmm. very dear number one I, I didn't I was concerned people would think I was crazy number one and you've I you've experienced that absolutely and understand number, that. Yeah, yeah, number two, it was it was it was sacred. That was mm -hmm. my stuff. I Absolutely. learned some very profound things, but I couldn't make sense of that here. Absolutely. It was a very uh, disconnected space. Finally, um, and this was in a roundabout way, I did happen to mention some of it um, to a small group of people. Mm -hmm. And one of the ladies there, which was a neighbor of mine, said, you've got to meet these guys at the university. They study these out-of-body experiences or near-death experiences. And she said, I know there's so much more that mm -hmm. you don't talk about. And I said, you, true, I've told you this much. But anyway, she introduced me, and I ended up speaking to a group. Um, it was a IONS group, mm -hmm. actually, in, in, oh, in Utah, the local group there. And in that audience was a publisher mm -hmm. who came up and said, you have got to do a book. Awesome. And I'm like, I, you know, I don't, I, I had no intention of writing a book. I don't fancy myself an author. But they, you know, outlined the process, and it, it drove me to really go find out. So I, I actually went back to the scene of the accident, which yes. I knew right where it was. It was mile marker 80, about two hours north of Las Vegas. And I asked. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, you know, I asked, am mm -hmm. I really supposed to write this book? And I got a profound answer that said yes, a resounding yes. That's why, that's why you're still here. Um, and I was told, and it's funny, when that voice that speaks to the heart, I mean, Absolutely. I I can quote what I was told. I was told, share your experience. Mm -hmm. And if you do, people will heal. And they'll get their own answers to whatever they're dealing with in their life. And so I embarked on, on, on writing this book. Now, that was an interesting process, and I won't go into all that, but what happened, I wrote it as if, nobody would ever read it. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought, well, my kids will at least know what happened to me. I mean, that, that was kind of, you know, my mom That's, will probably buy right. a book. Well, the book took off. I mean, it, it hit the top 10 in the category on Amazon and has remained there now for two years. I've just released the second book. That's awesome. From that, there's been all kinds of speaking engagement, lectures, everything from district judges to right. nurses to near-death experiencers. Right. But the message is, is very much the same, and it's a... It's a message, number one, of unconditional love and our Absolutely. connection. It's a message of overcoming. Mm -hmm. And it's a message that we always have a choice. You Absolutely. know, I mean, we have a choice. We, we, are, the, we are the designers and, and the architects of our own experience here. And it's, it's all based on how we choose to, um, to experience the things that happen. So choosing joy and choosing to move on and choosing to embrace the light rather than, you know, dive Absolutely. into that deep, dark dive. Um, is really what's happened and what, where life is going. I still have a day job that I mm -hmm. love, and I work 50, 60 right. hours a week in the office, but every spare moment I can, I'm, I'm either lecturing or speaking, or I'm in the process of book number three now. Oh, which, that's incredible. Uh, yeah, the publisher, they want, they want more books. Well, that doesn't and, surprise um, me. And there's always more. I mean, that's I've right. just continued to learn, and things have opened up where, you know, dreams, visions, whatever you want to call right. it, but we're we're very, very connected, not only to each other, but to those realms of, Absolutely. 
of the beyond. I thought it was really interesting. Can you tell me a little bit about the um, the Native American? Oh, sure. Things that you're doing because it's a really great way for uh, to help people start expanding their awareness. It's a it's a tool almost. What yeah. are you doing? Well, I, it, and it was an interesting path. I, when, after the experience, I I was trying to align or make sense of my experience with religion. Right. How does it work? I, I went through a, a path of, you know, energy work and Reiki mm -hmm. and different things. And finally um, ran onto some Native Americans, some shaman. Mm -hmm. uh, they came from Hopi backgrounds, some from Inca. And it's funny because I grew up on a little farm and I'd been mm -hmm. exposed at an early age to a, a Native American man and I realized, you know, in hindsight, mm -hmm. what had attracted me to that. But um, in working with these shaman, um, and it was very interesting because one, one of the shaman, who was a woman, actually mm -hmm. came up and she said, you've been there. And I hadn't talked about my near-death experience at all. I said, I've been where? I've been here. She goes, no, you've been to the world of spirits. Oh, wow. And she began to recount things that I knew that I hadn't shared with anyone. And as a result, I, I went through some sacred ceremonies with them and with some rites and, and learned that their modalities, mm -hmm. their their practices, their mm -hmm. ceremonies, were very, very beneficial in me really grounding myself and getting my own answers and, and really making sense of what had happened in, in beautiful ways. And I still, you know, I still do my ceremonies. I, ast I attend sweat lodge with Lakota Indians oh every gosh. chance I get, That's even to awesome. this day. Yeah, we have footage for that, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, no oh. footage of that. But, um, uh, but just beautiful, beautiful people, but they, they, it resonated with me based Absolutely. on what I had experienced. And that's, you know, that's the interesting thing, because there's things I believe in, but it's right. just a belief, right? right. Absolutely. And there's things I hope for, and yet, you know, that's right. just hope. But there's things I know, and the things I know based on experience are the things I hold dear. So anything Absolutely. that resonates at that level, um, that's what I embrace. That's incredible. Now, let me ask you, are you doing offering programs or any kind of um, lessons or sessions people can attend? with you to start experiencing hope and joy and all of those things? What do you? I, I am, and it's in the infant stages. I know you're busy. Yeah, I'm very, very busy, but <laughs> we have had gatherings, and I call it At One, mm -hmm. A-T-O-N-E. And do you have one. a website? There's a website. Okay, what's that? At, at one now Okay, com. at one now dot com. All but right. we, yeah, we, we've had gatherings where people come in, and a lot of them are grieving. A okay. lot of them are looking for peace somehow right. in their life. Um, some of them are just interested in spiritual mm -hmm. things. They want to raise their vibration Absolutely. to a different realm of spirituality. But I've just recently um, kicked off a five-week program, which is based in Native American practices. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've set up a medicine wheel in my back, oh, that's <laughs> down, down on our property in the backyard. Oh, my and, gosh. And things like that. But that's it's, fun. yeah, it, it's it, it's to simply assist people to get right. connected that way. And it's, it's, you know, here again, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Exactly. You know, I... I still teach a Sunday school class right. on a Sunday morning, and I, I, I love connecting and just sharing what I know, but allowing people to get their own answers. Absolutely. I mean, I have mine, and that's right. what I'm grateful for. I just want to open up a space where they can get their own. Absolutely. I think that is just wonderful. Um, now, you are working on a third book, and I don't know if you're allowed to even talk about <laughs> it at all, but if you want to share anything to get people excited, because I know they are already excited about your first two books. Well, yeah, the, the, the first two books are very personal memoirs. Absolutely. I mean, it's like the first one was the near-death experience, the accident, all that happened. The second one is all about putting the pieces back together. How do right. you build a life when you've lost half your family, you've lost a lot of your physical capabilities, and, and your heart's busted in so many pieces, you Absolutely. don't know how to put it together. And that's book two. Um, book three is very much the same, but it's all about the symbols that are so evident in our lives if we just look around and notice and Absolutely. see things. Um, everything from the trees, the earth, the sky, the moon, mm -hmm. the way light is reflected. But I, I, I did have, um, since the near-death experience, just a deeper insight to symbols. Oh, mm -hmm. now I see what it means. Even if I read the Bible, I see it mm -hmm. differently. Oh, that's, that's what he was saying. <laughs> now I get it. You know, and it's, it's really yeah. interesting. It is. That's incredible. And when can we look for that book? Do you have a time? It'll, it'll, it'll be next okay. year. They're looking awesome. for something in, uh, in the fall as a, as a rough outline yeah. and manuscript. It'll be a year away. The second book just came out. It's only been out for a few I months. I know, so. but sign me up for the third. I'm ready. And congratulations <laughs> okay. to you. It's going to be amazing oh, as you. you are. And I just, I really appreciate your time and keep up the wonderful work. You're just a wonderful messenger. Oh, the 
Pleasure is all mine. Thank you, Erica. Thank you.